Despite the steady decline of American textiles, the industry still does support a fair amount of jobs, just upwards of half a million. But since each of those jobs actually supports three more jobs further down the line, you're looking at a workforce large enough to populate Nebraska, all in the business of putting clothes on your back. And in Stafford Springs, Connecticut, 40 of them are working at breakneck speed to fill a rush order worth $20,000, due for shipment by quitting time. But making that deadline doesn't just fall on the spinners and the weavers here. It's also on mechanics like Kirk Simmons to ensure that each of the company's mills is working just as it should. And right now, one of them is not. I have no idea what the problem is going to be. And I won't know until I get there and see how high off the floor Keith is. But on arriving at the mill in question, it seems that Keith is staying busy elsewhere, leaving Kirk to figure out exactly what has gone wrong with this warping machine. There's nothing obviously showing. Power's all on, so it should be working. But after 35 years on the job, Kirk already has an idea of what the issue might be. The drive gear on this sometimes loosens up. That's what happens. Hopefully, I can get everything lined back up. And if I don't, they have to start from scratch. Whether Kirk knows it or not, there's simply no time to start over. So hopefully, his somewhat low-tech remedy will save the day. We'll rock it back and forth, get the teeth meshed. Oh, and I think we're there. It's meshed. I believe we'll be OK now. And just in the nick of time, because Keith still has another 3,000 feet of thread to warp before he can move on to weaving the actual fabric. Looks good. When this job is finished, we'll, we'll be loading it into the rapier loom. That's where we'll be creating the actual cloth with the weft. And we'll see the final product. But try as Keith might, the hits just keep on coming. Oh, got a broken end. This material is, is fairly fine and soft, so it breaks easy, but in turn, the material comes out very, very nice. So you take the good with the bad sometimes. But it seems lately, Keith may be taking a little more bad than good. Another break. Yeah. This may be an issue. Same situation. I'll try it again, but if it happens one more time, I'll have to look into possibly changing the cone or maybe a result of a problem in the creel. Strike three, which means Keith is going to have to take a closer look at what's causing the chronic issues. No mechanical issues with the creel itself. Everything looks OK. I'm going to check the cones. Oh. Well, that could be an issue right there. We have a cone that doesn't have proper winding. And uh, I'm going to replace this one. And if one cone has a problem, it's possible that another cone in the immediate area has the same problem right there. I'm going to swap this one out, too. I'd rather take the extra couple of minutes now than waste an hour in the long run. With the new cone swapped in and fingers firmly crossed, Keith fires up the warping machine one more time. Looks good. Feels good. Seems to be running pretty well. While Keith gets his day back on track, down in the blending department, head of operations Giuseppe Monteleone is still dealing with issues of his own. Specifically, a large amount of black wool that somehow found its way into his all-white batch. 
But after an hour of gathering, the offending material should be just about clear. This one here, we're going to put them in a, in a bag where we have all the waste that we saved. I think we're good. And with that, it's time to start the picking process back up. So it looks OK. So, so far, so good. No, no more black. Everything looks good. With the picker back online, Giuseppe should be able to blend the remaining 1,000 pounds of wool in just under an hour. But no sooner does he get one issue squared away than another rears its ugly woolen head. I think we got some problem because I don't see the conveyor advancing. As you can see, it stopped, and we don't have enough material going into the spike apron. I think we got some problem with the conveyor. I have to shut everything down and go downstairs and check. 